There we have it, first load. What's up YouTube, John, JDS Outdoors here, and in today's video, we're gonna turn this pile of stuff into something useful. Something that looks like this. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take this winch right here and we're going to get it mounted into that box. First thing we're gonna do to accomplish that is I got this winch plate here. Actually, it's a fairly mount. Is we're gonna get that lined up inside the box where we want it, and drill a few holes. Now, with this fair lead over here, mounted see if i can do this so you can see it if we mount the fair lead flush where it's sitting on the ground there's a little bit of a gap in the side and the bolt holes don't quite line up so we have to put a little bit of a spacer underneath here so that way it raises this up off the ground about a quarter of an inch so we can mount our fair lead and it'll sit decently. So to accomplish that, I'm just gonna use some, uh, I got some quarter inch aluminum plate that I'll mount underneath there as a spacer and then I'll also use that as a backer underneath the bottom of the trailer just to keep the bolts from pulling through. I went ahead to my local hardware store, picked up some longer bolts so we can bolt right through the bed of this and if you notice, we have, uh, I think this is a two by eight. Um, we got one and then a two by four and then another one. So we're not bolting anything into the two by four there. We're bolting everything into the two by eights and tying it all together. So it should be plenty strong enough to pull stuff up on this trailer. So let's go ahead and get this plate in position inside the box. right down in yonder and uh, start drilling some holes, getting this thing up. Now I have the holes drilled, I'm gonna go ahead and make up the plate that'll fit there so we can go ahead and get our correct height. And once that's done, we can trace the outline of that onto the box and cut a hole in it. Alright, now using some smaller bolts, I'm going to feed them down 
and snug this thing in place. This would be a nice spot to have a friend. I'm gonna use an impact and hope it works. That's why I'm putting these uh, split ring lock washers on, kind of hoping they grab into, uh, into the metal, keep the head of the bolt from spinning, but we'll see. We're gonna get those uh, snugged in place so we can go ahead and trace our hole around and get that cut so we can install the fair lead next. Got her snug in place now. She ain't going nowhere. But we did notice that it raised the front up. So I think uh should probably throw a couple more bolts in in the front just to get it all cinched down tight. That way we're 100% in the right spot to cut this hole right there. So back under the trailer we go. Now we're back up top, everything's snug in place where it's gonna be. You know what they say, measure twice, cut once, right? Let's go ahead and trace this hole. All right, let's go remove that so we can go ahead and cut our hole. So I went ahead while it was bolted in and I drilled the holes out for the bolts. And what that allowed me to do was to bolt it on loosely real quick so I can transfer the line out here to make my life a little bit easier cutting. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pop a hole in there and get the saw out and cut off that shape. perfect hole. Let's go ahead and get this mess cleaned up and install the winch. Well now we got everything bolted in. Hook installed, winch is bolted in. It's time to mount the solenoid and then also uh, start hooking up the wires, figuring out where the battery and stuff's gonna go. So that is the next step. Got kind of late it's uh, 3.30 in the morning now, but we need to use this sucker tomorrow, so keep plugging away. Get her done. There, I got the winch all wired in. I'm not going to show how to wire in a winch because every, every winch is different. It's similar, but different. You just follow your instructions on how to wire yours. Got the battery installed. Probably going to have to come up with a better battery holder than this strap kit because I mean it's not gonna it's not gonna fall, but it stays in place, but it's not as tight as it could be, I guess. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the solar panel over there up on top here. But as you can see, we got some of these cross members. Uh, I need to run the wires through the lid, so I'm probably just going to pop a hole in one of these so we can run the wires down and over to the uh, charge controller right by the battery. And then we can throw the uh, battery charger in, probably uh, 
attach it down in here somewhere install our plug and this thing will be pretty much good to go so that is the next step so I went ahead and drilled the hole and installed the rubber grommet for the wiring for the solar panel now this plug is a little too big and that's okay because we got way too much wire here so my plan is to take this with the solar panel facing down so it doesn't have any power running through it I'm going to cut the wire we'll feed that through the hole after we separate them make sure that the wires aren't touching feed that through the hole and we're going to apply some double sided sticky tape to hold this thing to the box and then I also have a couple holes right here I will make a bracket to secure it to the top but the double sided sticky tape will also help this thing doesn't have a very big profile so 30 pounds of hold Gorilla Tape should be just fine I'm going to go ahead and get this mounted so we've got the marks made in the corners Gorilla Tape applied Let's go ahead, peel the backing off, and set her in place. There, now she's stuck on pretty good. I think we'll still put a little angle bracket there, though. Just for safety. So, let's go ahead and get this uh, bad boy wired up to the charge controller. Solder in, a, solder the wire back on, and uh, keep moving along. Alright, went ahead and got the solar charge controller mounted on the lid, along with the battery charger. Figured that was a pretty good spot for it to keep it uh, out of the way. Got the wire zip tied together. I got to get some uh, wire loom or something to put over that just to clean it up a little bit. All going to the battery. And then I mounted the plug over here on the side. So let's go ahead, plug that in, and see if our battery charger up there turns on. Look at that. She works. That's pretty cool. And we're not in the sunlight, so the charge controller is not. The uh, LED lights in here are not enough to trigger it. But it does work. It's putting out like a tenth of a volt. So not enough to uh, turn on the charge controller. So, heck yeah. Now we got all that space over there for straps and whatnot. I think... Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this get this trailer cleaned off here and go pick up my first load. I'll uh, check back in once I got her hooked up to the old pickup. She's all loaded up, hooked up to the old pickup. Now that we're up in the sun here, the charge controller, I don't know if you can pick it up on camera, but Charge controller is blinking now. Let's go uh, pick up our first load on the new trailer. There we have it, first load. Just a little one. Seventy two hundred pound forklift. Let's get it delivered. Well that about sums up this project on today's episode on JDS Outdoors. Next step, it's time to winterize the old camper. The seasons are changing. So 
as always, thanks for watching JDS Outdoors. i got a bunch more projects coming up, so if you want to see what those are, feel free to subscribe and uh, like this video if you found it helpful. It uh, helps out me. It keeps me doing these videos, even though I only get a few hundred views on each video. So, anyways, as always, thanks for watching JDS Outdoors.